Straight Talk from Israel. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. Listening to the Tamar Yona show here at IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. With all of the anti Semitism, or we really should say, as our show host Howie Silber- Silberger says, anti Jewism going on around the world, and especially now in the United States, the place where Jews always felt so safe and had the rights that everyone else had and it was a good life for them, is starting to turn sour. And there's a much bigger interest now in making Aliyah or moving to Israel, going on up and moving to Israel. But sometimes your spouse isn't as excited about it as you might be. So today I'm going to be talking a little bit about how to get your spouse on board with making Aliyah, some tips that might help you. And then in the show, we're going to be speaking with Dr. Martin Sherman, and we're going to be speaking about the politics today and Israel's interesting future. What's going to be with this new government? What's going to be with Netanyahu now that he's sitting in the opposition after at least a decade? Uh, A lot of things are going to be changing now, or maybe not. He still hasn't moved out of the prime minister's residence, which is quite interesting. He says it'll be probably at least six weeks until that happens. And a lot can happen in six weeks, especially with a new government that we have that I like to term as, well, because I think as apt as the House of Cards government, because what is gluing them together, the glue that keeps them together, basically was number one, getting the Tanyahu out, which they've already succeeded in doing. And number two, their quest, uh, their hunger, their uh, appetite for power. However, their ideologies are diametrically opposed. You've got right-wingers, supposed right-wingers, who are for uh, Israeli settlement or resettlement in anywhere in the land of Israel, uh, against the Arabs uh, who threaten constantly what uh, they're going to do. Let me just read you this I don't even have time to read you this headline, but more threats from the Arabs inside the Knesset that they're going to uh, put out an all-out battle if Israel does pro-Israel things. <laughs> we'll be right back. How did a nice Jewish girl from Delaware end up living in Israel? Shalom, I'm Natalie Sapinski. Join me on my show, Returning Home. Meet different people who have moved to Israel. Hear their personal stories, their highs, their lows, and everything in between. Each week, we talk to experts on immigration and the process of moving to Israel. Listen to Returning Home every Thursday, only on Israel News Talk Radio. Right, so I have been uh, getting emails, and people have been asking me also. Uh, I want to make aliyah, but my wife isn't really on board, or my husband is saying maybe in ten more years, but not now. And uh, I believe, as many others do, that there really is an urgency to leave the diaspora, the exile, and come to Israel as soon as you can, because you want to be able to come what we say, benachat, or comfortably. You want to be able to be able to uh, bring your riches, whatever you have, if you have a house that you can sell and you can take that money out of the country and you can uh, purchase a home here in Israel with that money. If you have a car, you can sell it and get money for it. If you want to bring your furniture, your grandma's painting or whatever it is that you want to bring from, quote unquote, the old country to uh, the new country, Israel, uh, you can do these things because if you wait too long, and we've seen it throughout history, 
This is not something I'm making up. It is historical fact. Every time Jews waited too long to leave a country that was turning against the Jews, they either died there or they were uh, had their things confiscated or they were stuck there. They couldn't leave because they couldn't take their money out of the country. So it didn't, I mean, you're going to sell your house and then you want to go, but you can't take the money with you. How are you going to survive here in Israel? How are you going to be able to buy a house? That's what people say. And so I guess I can't come and I have to stay, et cetera, et cetera. Or if they're lucky, they can run out, but then some of them are only able to run out with the shirts on their back as has happened in history so many times. Look at the uh, just the immigrants that came to Israel in 1948 and a little bit before and, and some time after. The uh, Holocaust survivors came with nothing. Everything was confiscated by the Nazis and their neighbors. And then you had the Yemenite Jews who, who uh, came barefoot and the Moroccan Jews who came barefoot, many of them with nothing, you don't want to be like that. You want to come when you can come comfortably. So you don't want to wait too long. And if your spouse is not on board, here's a few tips that might help you get your spouse to be more interested in this new adventure in life. All right. So I actually did write something about this some years ago, but let me just go over it really quick with you. How to help persuade a reluctant spouse to come on Aliyah. Uh, I have done our, uh, one person wrote me, I've done our Aliyah application, but have not yet uploaded the documents. And my husband keeps saying that we can't go until we retire. Well, I don't have 10 years. I'm not even sure we have one year. I'd appreciate any su- suggestions and signed anonymous. I'm not going to give their name because I didn't uh, get their permission to to share this. So I want to talk about uh, what we can do. Number one, don't just say, okay, well, my wife doesn't want to go or my husband doesn't want to go. And then you just leave it at that. What you should do is talk about Aliyah and talk about it often, even every day. Share success stories. Don't be a nudge. Don't be someone annoying, but do it in a very happy way. Share success stories about other people who made Aliyah because everybody else is going to share negative things, counter or even overbalance it with uh, um, saying, oh, you know, the Cohen family went and they came back after a year because they couldn't make it, blah, 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 which is, by the way, not true. People can make it here. Okay, if people, if Jews who came here with their bare feet walking across the desert with only the clothes on their back, who didn't know English, didn't know how to use computers, didn't have an education like Western Jews do, if they can make it here in Israel, you can make it here in Israel. It's just as simple as that. It's all your expectations and your demands. Well, I have to have this and I have to have that. But we don't have people starving in the streets here. Everyone, everyone here has food. Uh, everybody here pretty much has a roof over their head. Uh, there's a, there is no homeless problem here in Israel like what you see in the United States. All right, let's, let's go forward here. So uh, you want to give positive reinforcement, say, oh, you know, the Cohen family went and he got a job here and she got a job there and their kids are in school and they already know Hebrew and blah, blah, blah. Talk about success stories. Number two, tell your spouse that it's not the Soviet Union. Israel's not the Soviet Union. If you decide after some time, you know, say, listen, we'll give it three years. And then if we still don't like it or if we still feel that we, you know, we haven't really found ourselves here, you can always leave. No one's going to put a gun to your head and say you cannot leave the country. Just book a ticket back and go. And of course, I'm making it simplifying it. Well, then we're going to have to go find another house over there because we sold our house. Yes, this is true. But the point is, is that you're not stuck. Just as you moved, you can move back. And many people have, sadly. But many people have stayed happily. (laughs) Number three, talk about the Torah and the mitzvah. Of Aliyah. You know, it's a commandment. Uh, God took us out of the land of Egypt, out of slavery, in order to bring us to the promised land. And it's a mitzvah to live here. It's a, it's a privilege to live here. And the exile 
where many of us are living today, it was a curse. We were thrown out of the land because it was a punishment. But now God has given us the land back and we want to share in the mitzvah and grow because there's nothing like a Jew in its own soil here in the, uh, where the postman is Jewish and the grocery store clerk is Jewish and the taxi driver is Jewish and the bus driver is Jewish and your teachers are Jewish and your librarian is Jewish and your car mechanic is Jewish, etc., etc. It's wonderful. Number four, form what we call a chug aliyah. Uh, do this once or twice a month or even weekly. And what is a chug? It's basically you get together as a group of people and you invite them over to your house. You have some tea and coffee or you can meet someplace else you know, if you want to re- meet at a cafe or it's at someone else's house. And you talk and you plan together about making Aliyah. You say, well, you know, we were thinking of uh, moving to Rehovot. And someone else say, well, we want to go to Haifa. And, and uh, did you put your papers in yet? And, you know, I have to get this and I have to do that. And, you know, I'm a little bit scared. Like, how did you find, uh, did you pr- procure employment already over there? Wow, you did. How do you do it? Or, uh, oh, no, you didn't, but this is what you're going to do. Oh, and blah. And you talk about it. When you come together, you strengthen yourselves, and it's always on your mind as well. Because your wife or your husband hopefully will be coming to these nice social evenings where you have coffee and tea and cake and, or at a cafe and you get together with, with other people who are very positive about making Aliyah. You should also share and watch videos and talk about the adventure of life and make a list of good things here in Israel. There are so many inspirational films out there about how we fought for the land of Israel, how the Jewish people came home. You can watch Cast a Giant Shadow. You can watch Against All Odds. Uh, there's a, uh, it's a mini series of all these miracles that happen. It's not Against All Odds with the, with the um, uh, what's his name? It's not the Hollywood make. <laughs> it's, it's a different make. Um, all right. And uh, again, you want to be rubbing shoulders, maybe join some social media groups about Aliyah because their excitement and enthusiasm will also rub off on you and hopefully your spouse. And they can also... Uh, your spouse can also see that others are doing it. Others are making Aliyah. They're planning it. They're doing it. And uh, if there are some fears or doubts that your spouse has, they can see the success stories. That Look, here's a family in New Jersey that's going. There's another one from Los Angeles that's going. There's another one from Montreal that's going. And they see. And then all of a sudden, the one from Montreal their date has come and they, they left already and now they're giving updates. So, oh, we just landed and we, we're here and the people are so nice. They're making us food. We're meeting so many people. Uh, my kids already are start, starting to speak Hebrew. They're making friends. This is very positive stuff. Five, have uh, people or connect with people already in Israel and have them call you and speak to you. Uh, to, to speak to you both about all their experiences here. Make sure that they're positive people so that even though they may talk about bumps on the road after they've made Aliyah, that they'll share their achievements and how they got over any bumps that they had and how they succeeded. You know, when you uh, speak with people who just made Aliyah, who just moved to Israel, and they're um, making friends here and they're having positive experiences, it's very, very uplifting and shows your spouse, hey, if the Cohen family can do it or the Goldberg family can do it, we can do it too. And again, give your spouse that uh, agreement that if it doesn't work out in three years, we can, you know, we can go back. Don't, don't make them feel like it's written in stone and, you know, once they do this, they can never uh, go back if by chance they they don't find themselves there. Uh, Number six, join online groups, as I said, of people already in Israel. There's lots of grassroots WhatsApp groups today now even, and websites forming that are connecting people on both sides of the pond and answering questions about Aliyah and encouraging them about Aliyah. But a lot of people have questions. How do I find a job? Where's the best place to live? What am I looking at? How much does it cost to get a, let's say, a two or three bedroom apartment or a home, blah, blah, blah. There are WhatsApp groups. If you'd like the name of these WhatsApp groups, by the way, I can give them to you. Um, Just write me 
or email me, Tamar, T-A-M-A-R, at IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com, and I'll send you uh, how to get onto those WhatsApp groups. Uh, have your kids join Facebook or WhatsApp or other online groups to make friends with kids already here so that they'll want to come and then meet their new friends that they've made online. Leaving all their friends behind in the old country is very sad sometimes, and it brings anxiety and when they don't know what lies ahead in their new homeland. But if they have a, already a group of online friends that they can finally meet in person now and go visit and stay with them, spend a Shabbat with them after they get here, they'll already have their friends as their friends. Right? You have made, Let's say they made friends with uh, Yossi, but all of Yossi's friends now will be his friends. So this will greatly reduce any doubts, anxiety, and already give your kids a root here in the land of Israel. All right, there's more, but no more time. We'll be right back. Shalom, everybody. Making a difference often takes just one moment and one person at a time. I am Orly Benny Davis, your show host on Israel News Talk Radios from Jerusalem with love. You'll be hearing people talking about politics, religion, social issues, and making a better tomorrow. Join me, Orly Benny Davis, for God and Country. From Jerusalem with love. Wednesdays on Israel News Talk Radio. All right, we are back here at the Tamar Yona Show on IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. We're going to go to another subject, but while we're getting our guest on the air with us, there is one more thing I wanted to, well, there's a couple more things I wanted to say, but I'm going to say this one thing here. There's also the possibility, if you have children of high school age and you're thinking of making Aliyah, get them here to Israel first. There are high school programs here in Israel that are absolutely free including dormitories to sleep your kids. Their education is free, and they even get some food and things like that as well. Uh, My nieces and nephews went and did this program, and they have religious programs and secular programs for high school kids. They'll make friends here. They'll be here in Israel. They'll be taken care of. They have counselors that are, are watching them and taking care of them because they know that they're new immigrants. They'll learn Hebrew. They'll make friends, and they'll get a high school education here in Israel. And that... um will be your uh, anchor also in order to be able to come here because you're saying, oh, I got two kids studying in Israel for free, by the way. And again, if you are religious and you're paying exorbitant prices in the United States to send your kids to a religious high school, here you, we have programs where there's a couple of different schools where you can get them in for free and have your kids go to school here. All right, so let's go to our next topic here. Uh, Naftali Bennett. He is the new Prime Minister of Israel. Benjamin Netanyahu is now the head of the opposition. We've got a left uh, wing and Arab coalition that Naftali Bennett has joined and helped uh, form. Uh, What can we expect now with regards to the expiration date of this House of Cards administration? That's what I call it. And what about Netanyahu's future? Where is... What's going to happen with him? Here to tell us more, we have joining us Dr. Martin Sherman. He is the founder and director of the Israeli Institute for Strategic Studies. He's also a columnist and is published on several news media websites around the world. You can find him on his website at www.martinsherman.org or at www.strategic-israel.org. Welcome to the show, Dr. Martin Sherman. Thank you for having me back again. All right. So I just need you to speak a little bit closer to your microphone and uh, and just share with us. Uh, you know, we have a new government now. Uh, it's a surprise to see somebody who's on the right wing joining with leftists and even Arabs, the first time that Arabs are uh, in the government uh, per se. So what can you tell us? Well, you know, I said in one of my articles, I said in a single act of uh, deceit and deception, um, Bennett has given the left a prize that's precluded them, that they've been precluded from for many years, and that's broad access to positions of government uh, control and uh, influence. 
and it's it's something that's clearly against the the uh, will of the people because if you look at the election results putting aside the personal uh, animus to Netanyahu you'll see that a very significant majority voted for right of center parties which in fact reflects a wish of the people to prevent the left wing parties having access and control to influence in uh, um in, in in governmental positions so you know apart from being a uh, a dramatic uh, violation of uh, electoral pledges it's also something diametrically opposed to the majority of the uh, uh, the majority of the electoral wishes Okay, I just need you to speak a little bit closer to your microphone again, um, because you're fading out a little bit. So basically, uh, but a lot of I'm sorry, the, 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 the Skype connection here is a bit a bit of a problem. I, I don't know why I've never had problems before. No, you were coming in good um, before. You were actually coming in very very good before. Just uh, okay. Well, well, we'll work with what we have. Uh, so basically, a lot of people here in Israel, as you say, feel that their votes have been stolen from them because they voted for a right wing party. In fact, the Yamina party yamina in hebrew uh is right <laughs> it means right and what do they get they get a left-wing government uh, but ad kadekach as we say in hebrew uh, uh, until this until this point here we, we they hated bb so much it's not just uh uh Naftali Bennett wanting him out, but also Gidon Saar, and also uh, Yair Lapid, but he was already left anyway. But uh, you've got these right-wing parties also that uh, joined in, and, um, you know, Bibi's out. He's the head of, uh, head of the opposition, and people who feel that their votes were stolen, they don't really have any recourse, right? They just have to wait it out and just not vote again for that party, maybe. Well, I think the only thing that they can do is make the feelings felt by uh, public uh, protest uh, you know and writing in expressing their indignations expressing the outrage until the government uh, uh, eventually crumbles because you, you know the government is so riddled with uh, with internal contradictions um, it seems difficult to to foresee how it can last for any length of time which perhaps is the only a uh, bit of optimistic news that we we, we have at the moment. Um, you, you know, I, I, I you know, Bennett tried to to uh, justify this with uh, some linguistic uh, gymnastics by saying, well, his core promise was to prevent uh, a, a an election, uh, an additional election. But I, I don't think that anyone really swallows that uh, nonsense because. Um, if you if if you look at the, the, a recent poll came out showing how Yamina voters felt about it, and over half felt that it was a violation of electoral pledges. Uh, over half said that they wouldn't have voted for Yamina if they knew that uh, that uh, this what this is the way he would behave and bring in parties that he said he wouldn't bring in, like left wing parties and and especially and especially the. Uh, the Arab parties, and uh, a, a huge 60% majority um, uh, said that it was inappropriate for Arab parties to be included in the in the coalition. So, on the basis of those three findings of the poll, it looks like uh, you know Bennett has a very dim future in 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 in, the, in, in politics because right. if he goes to uh, Elections. I think it's very doubtful that he will get through the the threshold. You know, there was a, a a news item this morning. I didn't have time to read it on the show yet, but let me just do it now. It says here, pro-Israel right-wing movements are holding 14 simultaneous marches in Judea and Samaria and Gush Etzion today, Monday, all of which will be held in Area uh, C, which are controlled by the IDF. The Arab joint list in the Knesset is demanding a stop to this activity, warning of an all-out battle. So here we have more threats. Everything that yep. is Israel will do that they don't like. They're going to say we're going to leave. We're going to bring down the government if you 
fly your flag in Jerusalem. If you have a march for, uh, you know, uh, pro-Israel march, if you do this, if you do that, everything he's going to have, he's, he, it's, it's going to d- um, depend on whether the Arabs agree with it or not, which means that basically the Arabs are running Israel, not the Jews. Well, you know, the, one of the, one of the uh, bizarre things is that Bennett has managed to create a situation where supposedly a pro-Zionist coalition is dependent on an anti-Zionist uh, partner for its uh, continued existence. Um, the and, and even stranger, these anti-Zionist parties, by law, by the letter of the law, shouldn't even be allowed to to participate in the election. So you know, it's really if it if, if it wasn't so tragic, it would be comic. So, do we need to change the the system, our, our how we elect our Knesset members, or or just even just change the whole complete Knesset? Well, I mean, maybe know, we shouldn't have well, a Knesset; know, it, it should be something else. Well, in, in many ways, you know, we've already done that. I mean, I I can remember at least three times that the electoral system has been changed, and I, I think you, know, you can't control everything. And, and basically, what's happened is people like. Uh, uh, What's his name? Uh, Gidon Saar and uh, Victor Lieberman have basically put their personal animus uh, above the, the uh, national interest uh, because they were voted in by, by, by a right-wing constituency and they've done exactly the opposite. They've, they've empowered both left-wing parties uh, who are on the, on, on the fringe of being anti-Zionist and uh, uh, and parties which are blatantly and overtly uh, anti-Zionist. You know, you know. I remember we've changed the system where we had direct elections for a prime minister, but, but I'm talking about a total revamp of the system because even that hasn't helped us because we went back, uh, we, we we took the law back where you don't vote for directly for a prime minister anymore. So nothing really seemed to help whether we did this way or that way. Perhaps it should be something more like in the United States where we have representatives for certain local areas and 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 people can go straight to them because right now people are not dealing with with Knesset members per se. We're dealing with parties, and that way. No, but it's easy for Knesset members not to have to take responsibility to their constituents, to the people who voted for them. So, uh, you know, is there a chance? Is there a possibility of something like that, or would that be God forbid treason? I don't, I don't know. I, you know I'm, I'm a little skeptical about that because Israel is so small, uh, and uh, I think if people were elected directly by you know each town or each suburb, what would happen is that the, the elections would be dominated by very local issues rather than national issues. And uh, for that, you have direct elections of mayors, which I, th- I, th- I think covers that. Okay, I, I have to stop you for a second because we are having audio problems. You're coming in really high, and then you're fading out. If you're wired up with anything, maybe if you're touching a wire or something? No, no, I, well, what's happening is... Uh, okay, hold on, everybody. We're going to go to a break. Don't go anywhere. We'll try to get this fixed during the break. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. This is Shai Bentico, and each week I'll be webcasting to you from Judea, origin of the word Jew, a people besieged and beleaguered in every generation. Nazi Germany is but a memory, but in its place the world invented the phantom Palestinians as this generation's internationally authorized Jew killers. Tune in for a different slant on life in Israel. Phantom Nation, every Monday. Hi, I'm Rabbi David Aaron. The soul basics are the most profound, the most essential, and yet often the most neglected in our education. Join me for Soul Talk on Israel's News Talk Radio and discover the secrets to love, spiritual growth, and personal power. All right, we are back here at the Tamar Yona Show on IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com, and we're trying to get our guests back uh, by phone this time, so there's no, uh, you know, audio going up and down. It was very um, disturbing in the last segment, and we apologize for that. Uh, sometimes 
uh, you know, technology fails us a bit. So we're going to use a good old telephone this time, and we're getting him on the air with us. We're talking about the future of uh, I- Israel, and what does it look like with this new coalition government after a decade of rule by Netanyahu? We now have a, a new government. Um, some of them are polished uh, um, and experienced politicians, uh, although to the left and uh, the Arabs as well. And uh, some of them are new faces uh, for a lot of people here that we don't know that well. And uh, uh, we want to find out about the future of Netanyahu now uh, as well as being the leader of the opposition. He's no longer Prime Minister Netanyahu. Now he is the leader of the opposition. Dr. Martin Sherman is our guest. Uh, what do you see uh, uh, for Netanyahu? Right now, the latest headlines that I've seen about him are that he's taking his time to move out of the Prime Minister's residence. They say at least uh, six weeks, he says, until he can move. Do you think he's got something up his sleeve that he's thinking that within six weeks this government's going to fall and he won't have to move at all? Well, I'm, I'm not sure that that's his calculation because you know I think it's a bit a bit optimistic for him to think that within six weeks it will fall. But uh, um, and, and anyway, if it does, he, you know the the current prime minister would be head of the, the transition government. But uh, you, you know I, I think Netanyahu, in many ways, uh, was a, transi- a, tra- a transformative. Uh, uh, Prime Minister, and he's been very shoddily treated both by the press and both by uh, many of the people in, in politics. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not an uncritical uh, apologist for Netanyahu, and I think there's things that he hasn't done well, like, for instance, deal with the uh, the Bedouin in, in the Negev and uh, deal with the, uh, the judicial system and Israel's public diplomacy. Uh, which I think he should have uh, uh, allocated far more resources for, and, but, and but in, his building freezes, and 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 he didn't take advantage of the of the of the the Trump administration to uh, to initiate a large building uh, initiative in, across uh, the 67 lines, right. which in, in many ways would have uh, reduced the, the cost of housing in Israel as right. well. But, but he has had uh, great successes on just about every field. He's brought the terror down to almost imperceptible levels, apart from uh, every, every now and then an outbreak uh, in, in the south. But uh, compared to what it was under his predecessors, with buses and restaurants and uh, cafes exploding, um, uh, he's brought terror down to almost an imperceptible level. Uh, he managed to get the United States to pull out of the Iranian uh, agreement and bring back uh, sanctions. Except now both. that's going to be reversed. So, okay, we we know he's done good things. We know he's done bad things. What do you think his future is now, though, as the opposition? Well, leader of the opposition? I, I think he's going to find an increasing challenge uh, to his leadership. We've already seen this with uh, uh, Edelstein, which, who, who, by the way, I think is one of the, the better uh, individuals to... to uh, in, in, inherit uh, his position, um, but uh, you know I, I think Netanyahu, as a politician, has been head and shoulders above everyone else. Uh, yeah, of course you can make a case that after nearly a decade and a half in power, uh, there, there is a case for uh, replacing him. But I think he, the replacement uh, process that took place here was uh, was basically unacceptable and scandalous. Um, so I, I think it's a very interesting. Uh, uh, interesting uh, junction we're at now, because uh, uh, I, th- I think that on the one hand you have this, this fractious government, on the, on the other hand you have building opposition to Netanyahu, perhaps blaming him unfairly for losing power. But uh, I think there's going to be a rising challenge to his leadership at the moment. Right. I mean, already now, uh, the former mayor of Jerusalem, Nir Barakat, is trying to become the head of the Likud. Uh, he's got challengers that are um, seeing that the Netanyahu isn't so big and strong as he used to be, and this is their opportunity to maneuver in. So he's got inner um, competition. Do you think that he's going to survive this and come back as a prime minister one day, or do you think that his days are over and he should just go out gracefully? What's your opinion? Well, I, I, don't, think that, uh, I, I don't think that we can count him out. I mean, even, even though there is mounting opposition, it's, it's not a unified opposition against him. And you could find that both Balkat and uh, 
and uh, Edelstein neutralized themselves and leave Netanyahu as you know still with a priority of votes. Um, I, I think it's still early to count Netanyahu out. He's proved that he's a he's a tremendous fighter, uh, uh, you know, including against the, these uh, transparently trumped up charges against him, which has sapped off for a lot of time and energy. Uh, and uh, you know, as we can see, as as the trial progresses, it's becoming you know, more and more transparent that this was merely an attempt at a, at a legalistic coup to get him out of office. So, you know, Netanyahu has been counted out before. I, I think it's a bit early for that conclusion. So what do you see now for the future of this new coalition government that we have led by Naftali Bennett and uh, Netanyahu in the opposition? What do you see for the future of Israel? Well, you know, well, as you can see in, 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 in the upcoming vote on the, this bill about preventing unification of families, the, the government is dependent on opposition because they, they cannot master a majority for, for their own motion, uh, something which uh, Ayala Chiquet herself uh, proposed initially. Uh, so, I mean, that shows... R- repeat again what you said that they're trying to pass? They're trying to pass uh, a, a renewal of the prevention of uh, unification of, of uh, Palestinian families inside Israel. Uh, there was a, a, uh, a government order which uh, um, uh, prevented uh, the unification of, uh, of Palestinian families inside Israel. In other words, if a Palestinian, an Arab in Israel married a Palestinian across the Green Line, uh, they cannot uh, come together uh, within the, within Israel, they they have to come. They, they have to become a family outside Israel. There's no there's no unification of families within within the the area of Israel. Right? Isn't there also some, the the fact that some many of these Arabs would take several wives, even from other countries, from Sudan, oh, yes. right, and try to get them into Israel, even though if there are, the marriages weren't really legitimate marriages. They were doing it for political or financial reasons. <laughs> Yes, so there, there, there was there, there is a lot of uh, bigamous uh, uh, exploitation uh, of of the situation in Israel. That's true. I mean, no one no one's arguing that this is not an appropriate law that should be enacted. But the the, the current coalition can't get it through because uh, the 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 anti-Zionist Ram faction won't vote for it, and part of the, the extreme left wing Meretz party won't vote for it. So for it to get through, the co- the coalition is dependent on the support. Of the opposition, which is you know is an absurd situation, and uh, you know so the, 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 by the way the opposition has a dilemma here: should they vote against their ideological conscience just to bring down the, the government or to or to thwart the government? That's a that's a very difficult uh, dilemma for them, and and it's and it's going to uh, occur time and time again. Every time that Israel has to take a, a resolute step, half the coalition is going to be against it. And the, the government is going to be dependent on the opposition for its continued functioning. Hmm. So how long do you give this government under Naftali Bennett? How long do you think that they're going to survive? Well, that's difficult to guess, but my fervent hope is, is uh, as, little as, as little as possible. Um, I, I really think that this is a, a, a travesty of uh, political history in Israel. And I hope we can get uh, through it as uh, quickly as possible. By the way, if you if you look at Israeli political history, you'll see that every time that hawkish pledges were violated, uh, the hawkish pledges made before the elections were violated after the elections to support some uh, dovish concessionary policy. It resulted in disaster. The same the, the same thing happened with the the Oslo Agreement when two uh, right-wing parties uh, crossed the floor and uh, supported uh, Rabin's Oslo uh, plan, that was Goldfarb and, and Segev, which resulted in the, 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 the post-Oslo carnage. Uh, the same thing happened with Alex Sharon, who pre- uh, previous, uh, in, in the campaign prior to the elections uh, urged the electorate, the electorate to oppose unilateral withdrawal. From uh, from Gaza, and after the elections, embraced exactly the same policy, which his rival uh, uh, proposed in the, in the the period before the election. Right, and but that, they got that, away that, with that, it. 
they got away with it each time. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's still, it still resulted in, in, in the disaster. Uh, and, and uh, you know, it, basically, I think you see the same thing happening here. Every time that hawkish pledges have been violated uh, and uh, in favor of uh, some dovish concessionary part, uh, policy, it's uh, resulted in tragedy and trauma. Right. Well, you know, I think uh, the next, I think Hamas, Hamas is the one that's calling the shots because anytime they decide that they want to open rocket fire in Israel and Israel's going to have to respond, uh, the Arabs will just say, all right, well, we're not going to be part of a government that's killing our brothers and sisters in Gaza. Or, you know, and, and down goes the government. I don't see this government lasting too long, but, it, you know, time will tell. Yeah, I, I think you, you're exactly right. It's just, you know, it's too fractured. It, it has too many internal contradictions. Mm. It's very difficult to see how it uh, it could get to the two years where Yael Lapid uh, becomes prime minister. Very right. difficult to see it lasting that long. Right, I agree. All right, well, we're going to have to leave it there. The music is uh, already coming on. And I want to thank you very much for joining us, Dr. Martin Sherman. Again, you can go to his website. Uh, at uh, www.martinsherman.org or strategic-israel.org. Thank you so much for being with us. Okay, thank you for the invitation, and I'm sorry about the, the bad connection. Israel News Talk Radio's chat room. Just click the orange button at the top of the IsraelNewsTalkRadio.home page, log in as yourself or an anonymous guest, and join in on the fun. You'll meet other listeners from all over the world who listen to Israel News Talk Radio, and you can make new friends. Israel News Talk Radio's chat room. It's the closest you can get to being in the studio with us. We love listening to Israel News Talk Radio. Where can you get the inside news on Israel? At Israel News Talk Radio, we're dedicated to sharing Israel's inside story with the world by providing our listeners with news on Israeli politics, current affairs, and Israeli Jewish culture. The Israel News Talk Radio homepage also provides you, the listener, with useful information at your fingertips. With scrolling news headlines, weather, currency exchange, Shabbat candle lighting times, and so much more. Our radio programming is always accessible and on demand. We operate absolutely free of charge for everyone, everywhere. If you love what we do, partner with us now by becoming an Israel News Talk Radio supporter. With your support, you'll be inscribed on our Israel News Talk Radio Wall of Fame. There's nothing like us in the world. Be part of something great. Israel News Talk Radio. Straight talk from Israel. If you love Israel News Talk Radio, then you'll love our Facebook page. We keep you up to date on what's happening in Israel. Plus, little surprise treasures that we don't share on the radio. Go now to follow us on Facebook. Just look for the Israel News Talk Radio Facebook page. And don't forget to subscribe and follow us by clicking on the like button. We post great stuff there that you'll want to share. Israel News Talk Radio on Facebook and Israel News Radio on Twitter. News, opinion, and more. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. 